Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the class of Socio Introduction to Sociological Theory. In this class, we're going to explore um, the th uh, theoretical tradition of um, classical sociological theory. Okay? So, um, to start this class, I have a question. Why do you think that we need, or why do you think that we have a society? Any ideas? Yeah. Um, interaction between people uh -huh. to, to live together like in harmony kind of thing. In like harmony, people <laughs> trying to live in harmony, but people basically yeah. staying together like just yeah. So yeah. yeah. So that's Some the hand. need. Yeah. Okay. Any other ideas? Uh, we we have to live in the society so we can avoid the interaction between people. So we can avoid interaction. Uh, we can. We, we cannot. Okay. So we we have to. Okay. We have to. And this is what we need, and we have to. Then any other ideas? I think people cannot live alone. Cannot live alone. Yeah. They cannot yes. produce everything. I mean, clothes, food, then to exchange it. Okay, that's from an economic perspective. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's fast. Yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> good. Yeah, and in order to understand why <laughs> and, and how we are supposed to live together, we're stuck, right? We cannot live in a society. Yeah, we can. We can choose to live in an isolated island or desert. And um, like uh, Robinson, like, um, you have read the story, right? Yeah. He ended up living in an island, and of course he managed to survive, but it was a pretty hard time, quite lonely, yes. huh? So there is a need, what you call, like, we are social animals. We are supposed to be with people. And there is another concern that is the economic um, concern that only when we are together we can produce more goods, and in this sense goods not only means, you know, economic goods, but also like social welfare, mm -hmm. social, um, yeah, social satisfaction. So, yeah, these are basically what the classical sociologists were thinking about. So there are three theoretical tradition of uh, classical sociological theory, and now we're going to get to know them. There was this bunch of sociologists in the um, in the early nineteen in the early eighteen hundreds, um, they believe that the society is composed um, of parts of social structures that we cannot live without. Their society is composed with social structures like the government, like the legislature, and like the economic system, like you have mentioned. These parts are integral to the society and we cannot live without them. And this kind of idea is called the structural functionalism. Structural functionalists believe that we, um, these social structures, whether they are visible or invisible, they create our society and um, they designate different functions to these different institutions and structures. So um, they believe that this collective life and the social structure transcends individual lives. They are greater than we are. So this is sometimes what we believe, that the society is bigger than the sum of individuals. Okay, this is what they, what they believe. But there is a, a question in this theory. How do you explain social change then? If the society is composed of different integral, or what we say, parts that we cannot live without, then what, how can we explain social change? How can we explain revolutions and like political reforms? How do we explain how we come to what, uh, become what we are today? This is a very tricky question. Do you have any ideas? Do you have any opinions? I guess maybe because the thing is you can't really stay the same way for a very long time. Because mm -hmm. something or the other, somebody is going to be like a rebel or somebody's going to try to bring about a change and then yeah. people, society starts to realize initially, of course, they are going to oppose it, but then they're like, oh, this might be good and we should work and then, you know, the, yeah. the level increases, something like that. Yeah, so it's, it happens gradually, right? Yeah. Right. Okay, that's what the structural functionalists 
belief too. They believe that the changes they do happen, but they happen in such a gradual and slow way that nobody can really detect them. But there is another group of sociologists they think otherwise. They are the conflict theorists. They are the conflict theorists. One of them is very famous, you know, Karl Marx. He's one of the conflict theorists. He believes that, no, what the structural functionalists say about the society was wrong because we're living in a constant a society of constant changes, especially the modern society. Look at how many wars we've been through. Look at how many revolutions we've been through before we come to what we are standing here today. So, um, so we are, we are, I'm sorry. Um, the conflict theory. So yes, I was a little bit surprised. <laughs> okay, but um, the conflict theorists like Karl Marx believe that changes are inevitable and they are brought about by individuals of the society. And she, he perceives the society as one that is full of constant conflicts between individuals because there is this um, inequality that's so prevalent in the society that in, there is a tension between individuals and the social structures. His favorite theory is about classification, um, the stratification within a society that we have different classes and there is an in, in um, resolvable tension between um, different classes. So this tension pushed the society forward by um, instigating social movements, revolutions, and so on. So this explains how the society is changing, right? But how do we explain, you know, what it is today? Like, um, we're living in a sort of peaceful um, era, though there are occasional wars <laughs> around the globe. But how do we explain, you know, a certain, a quiet, a tranquil society with this theory. Marx argued that we are living in, we are actually still living in all kinds of tension. Look at the business crisis, look at the business cycle, it never stopped. Economy, um, modern econo economists, they believe that, oh, we are living in the, the high time of, of the human history because we have uh, material abundance and everything. But the business cycle never stopped. 